About a hundred kilometers from Johannesburg, near the N1 route, you will find the small free state town of Friedefort. The area that surrounds Friedefort is the oldest and largest meteorite impact structure ever found in the world. This impact took place 2,000 million years ago, and today the structure is a distinct feature in this otherwise flat countryside. The impact transformed the earth and gave birth to unique and diverse fauna and flora species. In early times, people found refuge and safety in the hills, and archaeologists discovered artifacts dating back to the Stone and Iron Age. Not long ago, gold seekers mined near villages such as Fenterskruen. Like scars, their tunnels and dumps crisscross the mountainside. Today, Fenterskruen is the center of a fast-growing ecotourism trade. Most landowners are members of a conservancy, and many are relocating the wildlife that once roamed the area. The adventurer can choose between the Val River that meanders through the dome area, perpendicular cliffs that challenge the courage of the upsailer, and a wide choice of hiking trails that will take the hiker through several historical places and different habitats. Travelling at 20 kilometers per second, the biggest and oldest of all the massive meteorites struck the area near Fredefort 2,000 million years ago. It was about the size of Table Mountain and the impact obliterated all forms of life. Imagine a sandwich with different horizontal layers. Before the impact at Fredefort, this area was composed of stacked geological strata. The top layer, called the Transvaal Supergroup, was a compilation of sedimentary rock types such as dolomite. The volcanic Finkersdorp lavas formed the second layer. The third layer, or Witwatersrand Supergroup, contained gold-bearing conglomerates. Granite formed the bottom layer of this geological sandwich. The effect of the impact reverberated through the earth and changed the surrounding environment over an area with a diameter of almost 300 kilometers. The basic crater alone occupied an area of more than 90 kilometers in diameter. What happened to the four-layered geological sandwich? When the meteorite penetrated the earth, these layers were at first deformed into a great dent with a crater in the middle. Around the crater, beds were overturned. A rebound followed, which filled up the crater and caused further overturning. Previously deeply buried beds were brought to the surface. And that is basically the reason why granite and gold can be found close to the surface today. In the space of a few minutes, everything was over. 
And after being exposed to the elements for millions of years, the structure has now been eroded to a level where no crater-like features can be distinguished. Meteorite impact structures are complex. They are made up of concentric rings. The same rippling effect is seen when one drops an object into water. The ridges near Fredefort and Paris form the core and inner circle of the dome. A second circle is seen in the hills in the vicinity of Fochville. This ring reaches past the Gatsrand near Carltonville in the north to Kroenstadt in the south, where it lies buried underneath much younger Karoo age sedimentary rocks. Remnants of the third ring may be observed in a line from Ventersdorp to Krugersdorp. Due to erosion, the rest of this ring is not clearly visible today. Besides the impact rings, geologists are also looking for other clues to support the meteorite premise. The first clue will be the presence of gold or relatively close to the surface. The meteorite brought barren Witwatersrand reefs to the surface when it turned the geological sandwich on its head. Miners did find gold in the mountains, although they were never really able to make a living here out of this precious mineral. The next clue to look for is evidence of shock. Shatter cones are definite signs of shock and they are scattered all over the dome. Next clue, what about rocks that melted in the scorching heat? Such rocks are present in the dome and they are called granophyre. You can identify granophyre by looking for inclusions of other rocks that were taken up into the molten mess. While some were shattered and some were melted, other rocks were pulverized into a substance called pseudotacolite by geologists. Tacolite is a volcanic glass and that pseudo denotes the fact that it's not real tacolite. Marlin Mine is a worked out granite mine near Kopiskral in the district of Paris. The granite with its inclusions of pseudotacolite is a geologist's dream and it shows that pulverized rocks were emplaced into the cracks and crevices caused by the meteorite's impact. A geological sleuth and firm believer in the meteorite premise will come across these rocks with its broken up patterns. They are called breccias, and the intricate puzzles were composed when a very firm type of rock called chart exploded. <laughs> the Frieda for Dome a challenge for the sleuth who believes that more than 2,000 million years ago, a stone from heaven created a paradise, a geological wonder world, where many more treasures are waiting to be discovered.